What's most important about an artist like Justin Bieber is his vocal. Everyone wants to hear Justin Bieber. That they came to hear him. Um, his band, you know, needs to sound great too. But really, people are coming to hear Justin Bieber. So here, Iron Maiden, everybody has their favorite band member, you know, amongst the guys. They all want to hear them, and they're all important. You know, they're truly a band uh, versus just an artist. And I think those, that's the kind of the difference. The focus of your mix becomes more of an overall thing versus, you know, pushing Justin Bieber forward. The real challenge is this. They have three guitar players, and um, their tones are are similar. I mean, the, their guitar in general is, is similar. When you have three of them to try to mix heavy metal tones together, that's difficult. But um, Steve Harris's signature bass tone also has some frequencies that are in that guitar range. So really, you're kind of having to mix four guitars, a uh, drum kit and a vocal. And so making all of those things work to where you can hear each of them individually at all times is, is difficult. That's, that's a struggle for sure. We're using Player Cohesion 12 and Cohesion 10. Uh, it's a 10 inch box on the outside and it's a 12 inch box on the inside. 16 deep on for the Co-12, 18 deep for the uh, Co-10 today. You'll notice that there's not a whole lot of sub going on out there. That's what's great about, particularly about this PA is that it doesn't require a lot of sub um, information to really sound great. There's three flown aside, so six in the air, and then there's six on each side in the ground. So 12 plus six flown, and that's it. I mean, you'll discover when you hear it later, there's plenty of sub information. Um, and I, when I was doing Jay-Z, which is a, an act that requires lots of sub, same kind of thing. We, it's not like we had 64, you know, subs. Uh, we were doing it with like 30 subs, you know, and it was, you know, awesome. It's pretty amazing, this Claire box. Um, I have to say, I'm thoroughly impressed with it. I used it for Jay-Z, and now I'm using it with Iron Maiden. Um, for the size that it is and the amount of boxes, um, you know, that's always a thing that you have to struggle with with a client, with any production manager and any tour manager is uh, truck space and you know those kind of things. So for the amount of boxes, it's an amazing sounding PA. I, I'm really enjoying it. It's the right PA for this band, for sure. The reason that you use Claire Brothers, are, there's twofold. You use them because of their global availability everywhere and also because they're people. Everyone that works at Claire Brothers uh, is well-trained, um, does their job well, and is at the top of their game. Uh, and so I, you know, I want to work with those kind of people. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I can't say enough about Claire. They're, they're a great company. Kick drum is uh, a 91 and a 52. Inside the kick drum, it's double-headed kick drum, so there's no hole in it. It's inside with a maze system. There's a maze makes a system that holds those two microphones inside of a, a kick drum that uh, doesn't have a hole in it. It's really great. You can uh, manipulate those microphones left and right and also forward and back inside this rail system. I think it's uh, maze.com. Check it out. It's really great. Um, so that's the kick drum. Snare drums uh, is Telefunken M81 on the top, 57 on the bottom. Um, toms are all uh, DPA 4099s. Um, so there's nine of those. Uh, Hi-Hat is another DPA mic, the 4011. Um, oh, the ride cymbal is a, a Mojave microphone, um, as well as the overheads, the, our Mojave, uh, the FET 201. I like that microphone a lot. It's great for cymbals and for overheads. Um, other kind of overheads I really like have to high pass up a bunch. These ones sound, they just sound so great that they kind of are like a global capture of the drum kit. Uh, I don't have to high pass and I don't have to do a lot of EQ to make them work. Uh, so ride cymbal and overheads are, are Mojave FET 201s. Um, guitars are a toll. Uh, it's a microphone made in from South, of, uh, South Africa. Uh, this guy basically makes them out of his garage. Um, they uh, TUL um, and they're I've been using them for a few years now and they're just really great on rock guitars. 
Um, so there's Tall on all three guitars. Uh, also on all three guitars is uh, usually a 57. Uh, and on one of the guitars, there's an EV, uh, EV uh, 409. Um, it just needed a little bit more, kind of a large diaphragm microphone. Um, but most of this tone that you hear is, is from the tall microphone. Um, there are also uh, Palmer uh, speaker DIs in there. Um, I use them to just kind of fill up the guitar, you know, underneath. Um, gives me control uh, over, instead of just open microphones, you know, it gives me control of the, of the guitars. Um, vocals, 58. All of them. Uh, Bruce is on a standard 58, standard sure wireless stick. Um, just sounds great on his vocal. It's perfect for him. Uh, I think that's it. It's a Digico SD7 with Waves on board. Um, it's my console choice. Been my console choice. I've been using it now for at least five or six years. Um, it's just a great sounding desk. Um, you know, combination combined with waves, um, I think the two go together, you know, uh, like chocolate and peanut butter. They go together uh, and uh, they make for a really great tasting candy bar. Um, both of them are great tools, but combined is kind of what I do to get the sound that I need. I have some outboard gear. I have three Vercasties for reverb. I have a Lexicon PCM96. It's just a multi-effect unit. A outboard word clock made by Antelope. So yeah, I mean, it, it's not a whole lot of outboard gear. Uh, I mostly use internal, internal stuff. The way I lay out my console is always, the top layer always has the things that I need to get at most. Um, so, um, you know, sometimes you'll find in my top layer, you know, uh, one whole side of it will be just vocals, for instance, um, so that I always know when I go to my top layer, I can have everything laid out in front of me that I need for my mix. Um, that's just kind of how I lay out my console. Um, so you'll see, like over on the left-hand side here, um, I have control over uh, bass guitar and, and some together individual drum stuff. So for instance, you know, the kick drum has two microphones in it, the snare drum has two mics on it, but I, they are in a different place, the second layer, as four microphones. I run them into a group and have them show up here, so now I have control over them as a single fader for kick and snare, for instance. So that leads me to, to be able to control things very quickly and fast. Um, I generally, on the left side of my console, I always put the instruments, um, so uh, kick and snare, toms, um, there's uh, a vocal and effects layer, um, utility is just a layer for like, you know, walk-in music and that kind of thing. Uh, then over on this side, um, you'll see guitars, uh, and then some more utility stuff, audience, and, uh, and more utility, vocals on top. One thing that I do that some people do that, you know, or may or may not do, is um, on every single layer on my right hand bank, there are three main vocals. There's Bruce, uh, Adrian, and Steve. Um, and those are included in every single bank. So no matter where I am, um, I am able, and I, you know, say I'm working on guitars, but I'm always able to touch a, a vocal fader. It's always there. Um, so that's something that just I learned to do, because uh, if you don't do that, you could be somewhere working on some guitars way down in the third or fourth layer and then, uh, you know, have a vocal cue that you miss because it's not in front of you. Um, so it's just something that I learned. I put my vocals on every single layer. Um, then internally, I run internal waves. It's pretty basic stuff. Vocals are on top. I'm running a fair amount of plugins for Bruce. C6, primary source expander, DSer, a vocal writer I'm using on him. Five plugins is not like, you know, horrible amount of plugins, but it's it's the right amount to uh, to get the sound that I needed for him. Bass guitar, uh, CLA 76 and an R bass. Um, kick drum is an SSL channel. Plus uh, DBX-160, so is the snare, is a DBX-160. Um, toms, I have uh, some, some plugins that are on groups. So like the, this SSL channel, 
is, is on the Tom group. So even though there are nine Toms, um, I, I send them through a group and I, and I do the EQ for that entire group uh, on a, in a plugin. Same thing with cymbals. Um, I'm using some um, parallel compression for drums. Uh, I always use uh, the SSL comp um, for both the, the main bus and the parallel bus is the same plugin, an SSL comp. Um, the parallel bus is just getting crushed. It's, a, it's just a more, uh, same plugin, just getting crushed more than the other one. Um, then, uh, you know, I have some other C6s on um, guitar buses just to kind of smooth out some tones. Um, you know, pretty standard stuff. I'm not doing anything crazy here, really. Um, I take uh, the band and send them through a rack and do them kind of separately, have compression on them. Um, and then they get summed together with uh, the vocal and that is the master bus rack. There's band and vocal that get summed together right at the last minute into the master section. And that's the, I use just a C6 on the master bus. So. It's not anything super crazy. It's really, it's 24 racks. It's one stage rack, so it's really like something like about 45 inputs, I think. Reverbs are the hardest thing to make. They're the biggest DSP churning things. And currently, right now, as it stands in plug-in land, the only reverb that even comes close to that is a Waves uh, verb. Um, but uh, I, I think that I think you'll see outboard gear eliminated eventually. I think probably in the next five years. What's interesting about that is some people are going really retro right now. And my buddy is mixing Queen of the Stone Age right now, and it's like all analog. An XL4, old school, big, huge analog racks. So there's there's kind of two schools of thought, right? Like people are going all digital, people are going all analog. Um, I think eventually. Uh, everyone will have to come to this and and mix inside mix in the box you know um, I could get a good result out of it so why wouldn't I um, it allows me to do all the tools that I need to do it's included in all my snapshots it does changes you know outboard analog outboard gear doesn't do that you know all the stuff that's in here I can make major changes and relate them to snapshots and to songs so why wouldn't I it's a great tool It's a trip, it's, this band's been around for 40 years, you know? I was a fan when I was a kid. There are moments sometimes when I'm mixing that I feel like that 14 year old kid, you know, listening to Killers and Number of the Beast and, you know, all of those songs, I, it really kind of takes me back, you know? Um, and so that's, that's a lot of fun, you know? I come to bands sometimes where I really have to study what they sound like, so I have to listen to all their records and study them and whatever. This band, I didn't have to study anything. I knew them, I knew what their tone was, I knew what they needed to sound like, um, and uh, getting there was was a job, you know? Uh, but, I, but I knew where I needed to go, so um, that was a lot of fun. <laughs>